I'm Stephanie. This is Deliberately Creative, and I'm a coloring book artist and YouTube art teacher, and I would love to have you hang out with me. Prepping this page, I have clear gesso, and I am going to give my page just a lovely coat of gesso. It is going to buckle slightly. The gesso does make the paper a little bit bubbly here while it's drying. It does tend to dry fairly flat. I do want to make sure I get it covered completely. Now I just have to let that dry and I'll go the opposite direction. I am really impatient so I am going to dry with my heat tool and then do another coat of gesso going the other direction so that way it's all prepped and ready to go. Oh, and this is the Clear Gesso by Liquitex. It's the professional. And I just put it into a jar that has a wider mouth and wider lid because I already went up and down. So now I'm going to just go across. And hopefully I won't end up with too much of a streaky pattern. That's the only thing if you go one direction only with your gesso, you can end up with streaks that will catch your pencil funny. So you do want to go both directions. You can let it dry naturally or as I'm going to do, use a heat tool. You see how how much like a wet paper bag that looks, right? <laughs> and you go, oh no, did I just did I just ruin my coloring book page? Give it a minute. Give it a few minutes. If you like I said, if you're impatient, you can use a blow dryer or a heat tool, keep it moving, and dry it out. And we'll see what the difference is. We'll see if I ruined it or not, right? Look at that. Now, it's still not perfectly dry. I'm going to lift it off the, the watercolor paper, flip it like this, and dry the back also. First step, I want to put some ink tents in to the background up here and in the shadow underneath. Oh, that's a nice under the ground or on the ground shadow color. So let's, <laughs> my watch just has it by numbers and uh, you can't read the numbers anymore. So I'm thinking that this is a Prussian blue or something close to that. It's a very dark blue gray. And remember, now we've got the, the gesso, the clear Liquitex gesso on here. So I want to, what I'm doing is I'm just going to tip the, the ones up that I've used. So I want to get the backgrounds in. Let's see. There we go. This is sort of a, a brownish gray. I'm going to put some of that in here for the road. You notice I'm not being too specific because... I'm going to get it all wet. Just like that. And I think I think the sky is going to be kind of this ultramarine type of blue. We're going to go dark at the top and I'm going to have it get lighter as it comes down to the mountains which means basically I'm going to put it on pretty heavy at the top and then use my brush to move it around. And I'm not going to do the mountains yet. Okay, I grabbed a Zenart faux squirrel brush. I don't know if they still make these or not, but Remember, this is ink tense that's going on here. So after this ink tense has been activated, it won't lift off. Oh, I like that effect though. 
I like that super, super dark at the top. And then I'm just working my way down. Ooh, I've got a lot of water on that brush. On this really cheap paper that is not, you know, this is not watercolor paper, guys. This isn't even a cotton bond paper. This is your standard cellulose paper that, you know, Amazon prints on. And I'm showing that you can actually get a really pretty effect here. Put the gesso on the paper first and boom, you are good. Colors are so much more intense with the gesso for any medium that, you know, back here when I was testing, in the last video when I was testing, these up here are so much more vibrant than the ones down here. You can get a really pretty effect though, and I showed in my other coloring book, that you can get a pretty effect with the color soft pencils and with, you know, pretty much any of the color pencils. You can get a nice effect, you just can't get very many layers. So one of the, one of the ways to get around that is by doing something like this with the ink tents on top of the gesso first. So let's see here. I'm just going to put a spot of that color over there. Cool thing about these pages only being one side is that you're not ruining another image on the back side of the page. And you can use this for journaling, for swatching, for doodling, for working out ideas, for making lists. Um, I really think that this particular coloring book would be an awesome travel journal. Take it, color the pages, and use the other side for writing down where you were, who you were with, what the weather was like, draw little pictures, play pencil games, it's dot grid paper. I am going to get this area that's underneath all wet. And I'm gonna try and do it as neatly as I can. This brush does come to a nice point and that's how I get away with not having sharp sticks is that I can lay down the color kind of randomly like that and then go in with the with the water and the brush and get a much more specific uh, line much more detailed line You know what? I'm not even worried. I think I'm going to pull the road out a little bit farther. Just because there's lines drawn doesn't mean you have to stay with those lines. You can adjust around them. You can say, hmm, I like that. I don't like that. You can edit a picture, even though it's already painted or drawn, you can edit this to become whatever you want it to be. So I'm going to take that color up into that area there. I need to get a little bit of that color, sort of that maroon brownie gray. I put tape on here so I would have nice clean edges when I'm done. And then I'm going to do the mountains and this ground. I'm saving the saving the bus for the end because I'm excited. I'm excited for the bus, but I want to get the background in so I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to dry this. So now this is a fairly thick coat of the ink tents and it's not rubbing, which is nice. All right, next up, is the hills and I am going to look for a reference to look at 
for coloring the hills a little bit. Is I'm going to show you me looking for a reference. So what I'm going to do is pop over to Unsplash. And I don't know that I have any mountains already. Might have some landscapes. The quickest and easiest way. Ooh, camper vans. Oh, I like that. So that's by Stephen Lenardi. And I'm just looking at this because it's got the road here. And it's got the kind of background hills. So grays and greens and browns with this one has a little row of snow caps. Because I will say download. In this, now what I want to do is look for some colors to put into the background here. I want a different blue than what was in the sky. And that's going to go like right along the top edges. I'm going to keep it, I think, to the didn't really need it on this one. This one right here, I didn't really need it on. But that's okay, because I can lift this out a little bit. There. I just want to make the this little set back here sort of snow cappy. So just a touch of that. Sort of darkish blue, bright, bright blue, dark blue. And I'm just wetting it and just sort of letting it dance around. I'm not really being that particular on where the where those lines are. They're just texture. They're just texture. You can you can do whatever you want to do. Make it look however you want it to look. Oh, I like that. Now I am going to grab the white ink tents. Whoops, come on. I'm seriously thinking about putting um, putting this in, my, my sticks are starting to get just ever so slightly soft. Oh, that's cool. And you know what I think I'm going to do? I'm going to poof in some of those clouds and I'm not going to get this wet. At least not yet. Oh, look at that. Just poof in some of those clouds. bit. That's lovely. A little bit lighter right down in that. That's cool. I like that. Just sort of texture just a little bit. Not too much. And what's going to happen? The brown's going to go in front, but I do want to dry that a little bit. And now look at this. I have, you know, some of that blue coming down into this mountain thing that's going to be more brownish tones. It's okay. I'm going to just grab one of these sort of brown. See? Just get those those sort of jaggedy, bumpity edges. And I'm looking at this going, okay, so some of those lines make sense for what I want to do.
Look at that. You don't have to be, you, you don't have to be a super precise person with your with your ink tense blocks you can have them be a little bit a little bit smudgy looking if you like what you see make sure to let somebody else know that you like it you know share this sort of a little bit greenish gray brown it's almost the same color wow that's that's surprising I was not expecting it to be that intensity sort of muted green I don't need I don't need a lot I want a little bit of this kind of chartreuse moss maybe touches of that up here even it's gonna get mixed in it's gonna get blended so I'm not too worried about it look at that look at that lovely mess isn't that fun so I'm looking at that that reference and I'm kind of poking at this top edge and moving that color around. Some of that blue is coming up right here on this edge because that one was the, where I had kind of overshot. All right, and I'm just working my way down, thinking about, well, where do I want it to be a little bit thicker with color? Where do I want it to be a little lighter with color? moving the color around that's the cool technique here with the ink tents on top of the gesso you can move the color around now i might take some of my color soft pencils over the top to give me some more details but this is the quickest and easiest way to fill up your background and not have to spend all day doing it. But look at this, we're doing this watercolor style, this technique with the ink tense pencils on basically copy, copy machine paper. So by putting the clear gesso on it, and not ruining the page. But this is layer number one, background layer. And because this is ink tents, for the most part, this is not going to lift afterwards a little bit when it is still wet. So I'm just trying to get a little texture down here in the ground. I like where this is going. I do see, let's see, I think I want a little bit more. A little bit more of that, that blue. Oh, I see, it's going up and down more. more to it but yeah I mean this is a coloring book I guess I'm trying to make it not look like a coloring book but it is and that's one of the things with this is that by having it as a coloring book and having that design already there I can try different things I don't have to be stuck yeah by having this as a coloring book look at that wow that is already, woo, okay. I am so, so happy about that. Oh, it looks like a mess, but it looks like a cool mess. I think I wanna put a little bit of this ink tents over the top of that area, make it feel a little more dirty, a little more dirt-like. Now, I have to be careful with this down here. If it's not activated, it won't uh, stay put. 
So I'm taking a wet paper towel and sort of tapping it. And we're going to see if that will be enough to activate, right? I mean, what, what are coloring books for? Coloring books are for playing, for exploring creative ideas. They're a place where you can test and see is that something that's going to work? Is that an idea that you're happy with? Do you think that, you know, finding out, is that going to... Maybe that will be better. I just sprayed some water on top of it. And now I'm going to dry it. We're getting that, that nice ground in there now. Let's see. It's not, it's not too wobbly either. Drying it as we go, I think is the, is the way. Inside the window areas is just going to go dark. I didn't put curtains. I don't have to worry about that. I might put on these windows here, a little bit of this brown kind of see through the windows a little bit, see the, the background maybe, but maybe not as dark. Let's see if maybe I just put just a little bit like that. Not too worried about making it perfect. Remember, whoops, like that. Not worried about making it perfect. I had a little bit of blue in my brush actually a little bit of blue in the brush isn't a bad idea kind of makes that into just sort of a, a neutral grayish color back there a little bit brighter as we come up closer to us but the ones that are farther away yeah That window back there is actually going to be really dark. Guess we're picking up a little bit of that blue into it, which makes it feel like you might be seeing some of the mountainy bits. Whoa. <laughs> That's cool. But pretty much the inside of the van is going to be a really dark color. And this is kind of a gray green black. I'm just going to start making the inside of the van really dark. And this is a speed video with some stopping here and there. So don't, don't be too worried or fussed if you're not doing it as quickly. I need to get this done as about a 20 minute video. I'm taking a couple hours doing this because I'm just having so much fun. So remember, the point here is have fun. Second point is see if you can learn something while you're having fun. Third point here is share your artwork with others if it makes you happy to do it, but don't if you don't like how your people react to your work. People are pretty, pretty uh, easy going though when you share coloring book pages people are like whoa wow that's really cool 
when they see a coloring book page that's been colored in with more than, you know, just a 16 box of crayons. So, you know, take your time. Enjoy the process. And it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be ink tense. You could do this with colored pencils. You could do it with a 16 box of crayons. It's a little bit trickier when you start getting more detailed things to do, but you see what I'm doing here is I'm building up this shadow in the back corners and kind of up around the roof area, the ceiling. Look at that. Ooh, that's cool. There we go. All right. I'm going to take a touch of that real black. Get this back bit back here. This back bit. In here share what you do with me on social media I want to see it I want to see what you come up with so please share with me at deliberately creative it's going to be kind of this green let's see oh yeah it's gonna be that green that green is different enough from the yeah it's different enough from everything in the background. And the color comes all the way down below that bumper. These bumpers, oh my gosh. Death trap bumpers. I remember when I was little and I helped my dad with his Carmen Ghia um, that he had, I don't know if it was his or if it was a friend of his and he was just working on it. But I, I was out, you know, nine years old and I got to pump the brakes so that he could get the brake fluid through it and, you know, things like that. I mean, I wasn't really helping, but it felt like I was. I felt really good. I felt, you know, like I was a grown up when I got to do that. But uh, the bumper on it was a plank of wood that was just bolted to the front. Because I guess there, you know, in the, the 70s, there weren't as many rules, I guess or you didn't have to follow them if you weren't the manufacturer. I'm just getting that wet. I probably put way more color down than I needed, but that's okay because I am going to be able to go back in with colored pencil over this. There's enough texture and tooth. So yeah, moving that ink tense around Oh, I need to close that door. So this is a number, a number 10 round brush. My 
my paint is kind of thick here and I also want to get some highlights some area for highlights oh that's good <laughs> just like that let the you know this is a this is just a chunky piece of kitchen towel or actually no it's facial tissue Squish out my brush. Just squish it out like that. And start putting some my first color on here. It's kind of a reddish brownish color. And don't don't be too worried if you if it starts to look like you've got a bit of a pattern on here it will work out. That and then do a brown over the top of it. Yeah, that'll work. just getting, you know, it's getting some age on it here. shiny silver bit and the pencil is going over the ink tents it's cleaning up that edge look at that that's cool I think I'm gonna, that's the white. 
don't know. Is it white? Oh yeah, the white's gonna work. Let's sort of blend it with the white a little bit. And then I am going to grab a darker gray. Oh, when I'm sharpening my pencil, I'm using this Jarlink pencil sharpener. It's USB rechargeable. And you can adjust the um, how blunt or how sharp you want it. I kind of have it in the middle. So I went, I guess I went a little bit too long, a little too sharp. shadow up inside there. A bit more of a line right here. down from the top, I think. Oh, okay, so if it starts sticking really hard to your paper, heat up the tape. There we go. Let's 
let's just heat that top top row of it right there all right this is the finished version of the coloring page whoa so cool I really really am excited about it but right now what I'm more excited about is that we get to do the drawing for the three coloring book winners so right now what you see here is the wheel of names it is a random picker I'm going to click it it will spin and then we will see who the winner is so let's get the first winner book number one is going to be going to Catherine S <laughs> Yay! Catherine S., I will be getting in touch with you. All right, now I'm going to remove the name, and we're going to go again. Number two, number two, is Mary O. Yay, Mary! <laughs> I love it when people I know win. Even though I have no control over it. Yay, Mary! And the last book on this drawing. Now, I am going to be doing, if you didn't get into this particular drawing, make sure that you're subscribed to my channel so that you get and turn on all your notifications so you'll find out when I'm doing another contest draw for another coloring book. I will be doing one in a few weeks for my doodle gem um it's really pretty it's really cool and you're gonna want to you're gonna want it number three winner let's see who it is marina m thank you guys wow Thank you, Marina, for entering. Thank you, everyone who entered. I am so blessed and grateful that you're part of our artistic, creative community. So remember to do something creative. Take care of yourself so you can take care of those around you. I want to see you back here again really soon. And be on the lookout for more giveaways in the near future because I'm working on a whole bunch of coloring books. And that is really making me happy right now. So we'll be seeing you guys soon. Take care.